Hello, welcome to Autodesk NetFab Simulation Lesson 8, Importing Multiple Geometries and Supports. So in previous lessons, we went over how to uh, use your own machine parameters to run simulations on full geometries, but we always limited that to just running the analysis on a single geometry without support structures. So we're going to expand upon that a little bit, and the objective of this lesson is going to be to show you how to import multiple CAD geometries and also import support structures for those geometries. So we'll launch NetFab Simulation and we'll use the import button to bring in our first geometry. And that's a part. So we'll hit OK. So you see we have one part. Now we'll use import again to bring in a second part. So now we actually have two parts on the build plate. So now uh, if you remember from lesson seven, we've already simulated this part and we identified that if you try to build this, you're going to experience recoder blade interference. So we know we need support structures, at least for this guy. So we'll go ahead and bring in supports for each of these geometries. So the support structures that, that I made in NetFab Core uh, and exported as STLs, uh, this guy had supports that were as a grid type support with a volume fraction of 30%. So we'll enter in a 30% volume fraction and we'll bring that support into the analysis. The second support that I made in NetFab Core was a solid support. So we'll say this is a support structure. Since it's a solid support, it has a volume fraction of one. Hit OK. Now we have supports for both geometries. So we'll go ahead and expand the build plate a little bit. Now you can see we have both geometries, both sets of support structures on the build plate, and we can now use the mesh preview, give this guy a name, and it's going to run a full thermomechanical, or it's going to do the full um, voxel mesh for the entire, the entire build here. So we can turn off the visibility of the geometry and look just at the mesh, and we see that the measure was smart enough to, to identify that these are support structures, this is a solid part, and it even knows the interface between these supports and the parts. So we have a mesh for the entire, the entire build. So we'll go ahead and hit solve, and this will run a thermomechanical analysis for both of these geometries and the support structures. So we can keep an eye on the logs here. Now you remember the geometry that we did in example seven experienced recoder blade interference. So we've now um, used the knowledge we gained from that simulation to actually add support structures to this, to that part. And now if we look at recoder blade interference, we can see that that actually didn't, that got rid of the problem. So we have very high percentages on the recoder blade interference. We no longer uh, have a build failure on this, on that geometry. So we can hit OK. And now the first thing we'll do, we'll gray out the displacement results and look at um, structure type. So structure type will assign a different number to each type of structure. So number zero, which is blue, is the build plate, number one, which is green, is the solid geometry, and number two, which is red, are your support structures. So we can actually see this build up through the entire, the entire process. And we can also look at the displacement results, the plot settings to get a better, a better scale here. Really want a local scale. And now you can see where we have maximum distortion. So this allowed us to actually do the full solve for uh, more than one geometry. And in fact, you can do as many geometries and support structures uh, as you want. So just to summarize what we went over here, we imported uh, two CAD geometries and support structures for each of those geometries. In the next lesson, I want to uh, extend this a little further and show you how to use uh, the support structure failure prediction option in NetFab simulation to see if these supports are going to be strong enough to hold.